Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of the GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Eric Rodriguez, here every Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Pacific Time, 11 p.m. Eastern Time. Going to talk about everything in terms of professional wrestling. So, I hope you guys had a great weekend. I had a pretty uh, pretty long weekend. I haven't seen you guys since... Um, so I think Wednesday was having, um, you know, some Wi-Fi troubles. There's, um, you know, a fire around Southern California, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so, you know, it is something that I kind of realized over the break is that summer's over. So, you know, well, no, it's not true. Actually, in a couple of, uh, in like a week, I think in like a week, you know, from today, it's supposed to be like 97, 100. So we might have a chance to jump in the pool again. I know my kids are dying to do it once again. They're not ready to say goodbye. But I kind of am, you know, I'm getting a little older. It's so crazy how like it's like this. when you get older, you're kind of like swimming. Eh. But when you're a kid, you're like, let's go. Let's jump into any bottle of uh, body of water. You know, like you see random lake or, you, you know, you see a puddle like, you you know, when you're a kid, you want to jump into that shiz, man. Like when you're an adult, you're like, man, I got to walk at all day around in muddy, just sweaty, sweaty shoes. Like, it's just, uh, I don't know, you know, and I'm not trying to put a damper on trying to grow up. I know, like, you know, if there's a couple of young people watching this, they're like, man, this guy sounds miserable. I'm <laughs> just, you know, uh, but uh, all in all, had a good weekend. Hope you guys had a good one. So, guys, we have a lot for, you know, a lot of unfolding uh, to do today, our uh, segment one. We're going to talk about WWE SmackDown. It was a good one. It was very, very good. We're going to talk about that. In our second segment, we're going to jump on into some Monday Night Raw preview. It's happening right now. I got it taped. Can't wait to watch it, obviously, if you're joining me and if you're watching Monday Night Raw. You know, if you want to drop a spoiler, maybe we could talk about it. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, or just, you know, just shoot me a chat about absolutely anything. Get something off your mind. So and then our third segment, we recently saw TKO UFC 308, uh, 308, I believe, 308 or 306. I'm not too sure. Um, we had, they had, they had it at the spear in Las Vegas. Now there's a lot of speculation saying that WWE will kind of follow in the footsteps of its partner, uh, the ultimate, you know, fighting championship. Uh, I think it's a possibility. We're going to dig on into that. Our fourth segment, we're going to talk about, um, we're going to talk about TNA. TNA had a had a pay-per-view over the weekend as well, Victory Road. We're going to recap and talk about that. In our fifth and final segment, we're going to talk about some uh, Jade Cargill. Jade Cargill recently said in an interview that compared to AEW, the traveling is just off the hook. It's, you know, it's a lot. It's a hell of a lot. So we're going to dive into that, you know, dig on into a little deeper. Uh, but before we do any of that, I want to remind you to, you know, hit up that Super Chat, guys. You know, um, whether if you just got a burning question or a hot take in terms of professional wrestling, or just something you've been dying to share. We are all ears here at the GSNC Sports Network. This show's all about keeping the conversation going, keeping it lively, keeping the party going. Uh, so make sure you, your voice is part of the mix. So don't be shy. Go ahead and drop those chats, uh, those thoughts, those chats inside the chat box. Kind of you know, word that a little weird. Uh, <laughs> and if you really want to make sure your comment or question gets noticed on air, I, you guys go ahead and use that super chat. It's that dollar sign below that chat box. It guarantees that your message will be featured on the show. Plus, it's a great way to support our channel, support the GSMC Sports Network. Your support and your super chats and your super stickers it helps us keep the lights on and re- bring you even more awesome wrestling content. We are absolutely super super grateful for each and every one of you guys who uh, tune in daily. Your support makes all the difference. So let's keep the conversation going. Send in those super chats, those super stickers, because you guys are super awesome. And together we'll make sure the show is bigger, better, and stronger than ever. And if the super chat not your thing, go and hit up the you know the tips and donations link at the gsmcpodcast.net shoot me your comments questions or concerns tell me what you like tell me what you don't like uh don't forget the superman punch that like a subscribe button to the show follow the show follow the network here at the gsmc sports network we do love a lot of peace love and positivity a thousand and ten percent but of course we take criticism here feedback is a gift so don't be shy drop me any kind of you know absolutely anything love to hear what you guys have to say love to hear what you guys have to think and uh, yeah, so let's um, let's do it. All right, so segment one. Oh man, what um, what an episode of SmackDown! The first episode on the USA Network. Obviously, um, in the beginning, you saw Triple H open up. Basically, said twenty five years ago when SmackDown started. I remember. Uh, I think they were on on the UPN network, channel thirteen. If you didn't um. If you don't have cable, no, I you know I think it was on standard television. And oh my god, that's so long ago. That's crazy. Um. You know, before that, totally skipped over it. The theme song, the WWE SmackDown theme song with Meg Thee Stallion and, uh, you know, RM from BTS. 
I, you know, I liked it. I thought it was kind of cool. You know, um, will it last? I don't think it will. Usually it never really does. Um, I, you know, Monday Night Raw was doing it for a little bit. Uh, they, I think it was Enemies. I think it was the, the song Enemies. And it was pretty cool. You know, I don't mind the theme song. You know, I love the rebranding of the of the logo. SmackDown looks like um kind of remind gives me like a um kind of gives me like a PLE kind of feel to it. You know what I mean? And I know um you know they're starting to bring more pyro back. And uh, all in all, I thought it was um I thought it was pretty cool. You know, uh, next uh, we saw you know Cody Rhodes against Sola Sokoa in an unforgiving steel cage match for the WWE Undisputed Championship. It was clean, you know, this despite the, what happened after. It was, you know, it was a clean win by Cody Rhodes. Um, so let's go, I can't do it. You know what I mean? Like it's uh it's right now it's to the point where I don't want to keep watching Solo Sakala challenge for the title. You know what, to be honest, I don't think he's gonna challenge for the title again. I guarantee you he's not, you know. Uh, you know. And then the bloodline at the end came to attack Cody Rhodes. Roman Reigns end up, you know, he ended up coming in to help. And then him and Jacob Fatu had a stare down and he was daring him to get inside the cage to fight the big dog against the Samoan werewolf. And then, um, you know, once when it was all said and done, you had Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns kind of, you know, kind of looking eye to eye. You know what I mean? Like, OK, do we really have to come together to, um, you know, kind of defeat or kind of break down everything that I created? And it's, um, you know kind of crazy I, I love the storytelling i love the storylines and stuff like that so i thought that was pretty cool losing has consequences that's something the solo sokoa said uh to paul Heyman once when he was trying to deem himself the tribal chief he lost twice to cody rhodes and obviously losing does have consequences maybe um there's a lot of speculation saying that the rock will make his return at uh bad blood and, uh, you know, kind of take over as the new uh, young bloodline kind of leader a little bit. Maybe, uh, you know, joining in uh, the match between the tag team, um, between Cody Rhodes, uh, the Roman Reigns, and also um, uh, Solo Sokoa and Jacob Fatu. Then him come, him come, The Rock coming out. Initially, you know, people think that he's going to help. Roman Reigns, the original tribal chief, because he was probably, you know, he was Roman Reigns' right-hand man. You know, once when J Jey Uso got kicked out of the bloodline. So... I think that's, you know, that's a possibility, but, you know, that's a huge, um, that's a, that's a huge, uh, you know, something to accomplish right there. So I, you know, I don't know if they're going to be, be able to do all that. I hope he returns before Survivor Series. Would love to see um, a War Games match with the, the electrifying, you know, the most electrifying man in sports entertainment. Next, we saw Meechin. Meechin defeat Piper Niven. I thought that was a pretty good match. Um you know, one of those, uh, you know, let's give uh, some attention to, uh, you know, some of the girls, which, you know, it was great. I like, you know, I love Meechin. I think she's doing well. Um, Kevin Owens in a tag match against A Town Down Under. He first, you know, picked up a teammate. teammate. His name was Ricky. Gave Ricky the stunner once when Randy Orton came into the picture. And um, really the main takeaway from this match, first and foremost, is, uh, you know, I. You know, Kevin Owens' contract still hasn't been renewed or restructured or he hasn't signed, in, you know, uh, a, you know, um, you know, basically a contract to stay. Hey, what are they going to do with Austin Theory? You know, it's getting to the point where, you know, I just keep why not just uh, at this point, I feel bad for him. Uh, you know, Grayson Waller, he's a good wrestler, but all in all, like the match was kind of slowed down for him. Uh, I noticed once when, uh, you know, Randy Orton hit that power um, power slam on him. He kind of got up a little slow. Like, I don't know. He just looked like he wasn't, you know, in shape to be in, you know, to kind of have that electricity that Randy Orton and Kevin Owens kind of, you know, kind of brings. Also, uh, Austin Theory, um, you know, he he's very good. He's very, very good. He can definitely be a star. A lot of people uh, believe so. So it's going to be interesting to find out how much longer is this going to take? You know, what this whole theory, um, Austin Theory storyline with uh, Grayson Waller. And, um, and one of the main questions that pops up is, is it too late? Is it too late? Is, is, does everybody kind of think, you know, of Austin Theory as like a damn near like mid card, low key, not really a mid card, you know, kind of a, like a glorified jobber, you know, kind of like the kind of like the problem you're seeing with this whole Sola Sokoa thing becoming the tribal chief and everybody not taking him seriously is because it's like, you know, throughout his tenure, at, you know, besides beating John Cena at WrestleMania 39, he really hasn't had success you know what i mean given that he was the you know given that he was the right hand man to ronan Re roman reigns and roman reigns was being promoted as this total heel which meant that you know 
he, if he, if he wasn't going to lose the match, he was going to win it very dirty. Like, so, you know, I don't really condone solo Sico and that kind of a, you know, more like the WWE booking of it. You know, I feel like he could have had more of a kind of have had more of a momentum coming into it before, you know, challenging Cody Rhodes. I think he could have got a couple more wins under his belt. And um, I thought, I thought it would have been uh, you know, I thought it would have been better. All right. Next we have Nia Jax and Tiffany Stratton, Bailey and Naomi. So we have a pretty interesting tag team match next week on SmackDown. Nia Jax and Tiffany Stratton need to beat Bailey, Naomi. Loser leaves town. Kind of crazy. Kind of, you know, I, that is definitely um, no. I I don't think loser leaves town. I, I think if Bailey and Naomi win, they each get a title shot. But if Nia Jax and Stratton wins, you know, they they leave SmackDown. So. In all realness, I think it's going to end up with Nia Jax and Tiffany Stratton probably picking up the L on this one. Bailey and Naomi's going to come out victorious. It would be interesting to see like a triple threat match heading toward Bad Blood. Or just throw, you know, Bailey never really got her rematch after SummerSlam, and Tiffany Stratton did kind of screw her. So uh, I think we're going to see a one on one bout with Bailey. And then, you know, a thousand and ten percent, I think it's going to be pretty badass. Uh, you know, both of these girls are, you know, I definitely hope Nia Jax's title run is, you know, a little, a little longer than you know. Uh, I feel like it might end, which sucks because you know she's she's been in WWE forever. Obviously, you know she's putting in the work, and it seems like whenever she gets a title, you know WWE so quick to kind of rip the bandit off, you know, kind of tear the strap off of her waist and just um, you know, kind of make her into that. Oh, okay, we're gonna make her really, really dominant, kind of like uh, kind of like the Big Show, you know, kind of because that you know that's how it is with the. Bigger, you know, kind of a bulkier superstars. I'm not trying to be a jerk. Um, you know, trying to book them into storylines and matches and stuff like that. It's, it's hard. It's hard because at the same time, you can't, you know, you it's not like you're trying to dupe the WWE universe. Like if you see a big guy like the Big Show going up against somebody small, like, uh, well, not small. Um, can I see the Big Show going up against somebody like, I don't want to say Spike Dudley because no, that's too small. That's too small. Randy Orton, ah, Randy Orton could actually pick up the dub, but I don't know. It's just, you know, it, it's pretty hard. It's pretty hard. Got a chat from my man, Anthony Mazzano. I've been saying this from the beginning. Solo is no, uh, not the one controlling the new bloodline. Dwayne is doing it from behind the scenes, and this is just setting up uh, for a matchup at WrestleMania. Uh, I, I agree. I agree a thousand and ten percent. Um, I feel like the addition of Tamatanga. And now you have Jacob Fatu, and then The Rock comes in. I, I like it. I think it's a great storyline. And I, uh, you know, controlling things from behind the scenes, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Dwayne The Rock comes back in. Solo Sokoa kind of looks at him, kind of like, you know, a little shameful, being like, look, I'm sorry, I couldn't capture the title for us. And he was like, well, you did a good job as, you know, holding my place as a tribal chief until I came back. And then it's going to be like a huge shock. I want to see this match at Survivor Series so bad. I want to see The Rock. Teaming up with Solo Sokoba, Tamatanga, Tangaloa, and um, Jacob Fatu. Obviously, you're going to have the team of Cody Rhodes, Roman Reigns, probably Jay Uso, Jimmy Uso, and most likely probably Sami Zayn. Like, and, you know, I feel like that would overall be great. But um, I don't know. It should be, should be pretty interesting. Honestly, I'm, I'm waiting with bated breath. It's going to be awesome. All right, wrapping this up, we have Andrade beating Carmelo Hayes two to three. It was good. Honestly, this whole little, uh, you know, kind of series of fights they had, I felt like really benefit benefited both fighters. Uh, Carmelo Hayes, after being brought up from WWE NXT and, and WWE creative talent, creative, uh, you know, um, creative writers, not wanting, uh, you know, the smoke or not wanting the, the momentum that or the, you know, the anticipation or the ambition of, drafting somebody and bringing somebody like Carmelo Hayes to the main roster on SmackDown. So uh, I thought overall it was pretty great. Now we're going to have, uh, you know, the LA Knight taking on Andrade for the WWE United States Championship. Um, and I, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Will Andrade finally, you know, kind of win a belt? You know, he didn't really do much on the main brand after being drafted from NXT. That's what kind of caused him to kind of be like, you know what? Screw screw WWE. I'm I'm heading to AEW, but AEW didn't necessarily kind of do well with this creative character as well. But um, oh, it should be pretty cool. It should be pretty cool. And lastly, we got the Roman Reigns promo. Uh, the only tribal chief. You know, he said. Um, you know, a lot of things. I kind of love. He's like, this is my WWE straight up. Um, a couple of things that I kind of realized, like, and I felt like WWE did really really well. 
was once when he had Roman come back, he didn't really pander to the crowd too much. Um, I know this might be like kind of like a small detail, but you saw like during his entrance, you saw, you know, kind of people reaching out for a handshake or a high five. And he was like, you know what? Like he didn't really acknowledge them. Like, you know what I mean? Which was, which was the right thing to do. Like you could have ruined this uh, Roman Reigns' baby face turn as quick as you, um, you know, as quick as you tried to make him a baby face like seven, eight years ago. Like, you know, so I felt like overall they were doing really, really well. And I got a chat from my man again. Uh, but the question is, who would be the fourth person on Roman Reigns' side besides Jimmy? Jane, it doesn't make sense to bring ba Sammy back in because he's, um, you know, moved on. So maybe their uh, cousins. Oh, my God, that'd be pretty cool. I would love to see, uh, you know, um, Zia, 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 that too. Um, I know, you know, he, Rikishi, he said on his podcast, I think it was all on the top or something like that. Um, he was kind of, he said he was a little inexperienced. He said he was, you know, him and uh, not Tala Tonga, uh, the other guy, uh, Hikaleo. No, Hikaleo's ready. Hikaleo's already under the, under the WWE brand name. But uh, Zila Fatu, he's training right now with Booker T in his school, training him up. So there's no doubt in my mind that he there's a huge chance that maybe they bring in more bloodline members. I, for one, well, you know, I, I agree with you. I really, you know, I, I think it would be cool. I think it would be very cool to kind of see Zant, Sammy come back and try to, you know, back up his honorary Uses and be like, I thought that I think that'd be pretty cool. But then also you can make the same argument for Jay Uso as well. He has so much going for his singles run right now. He's kind of competing for his first championship, the Intercontinental Championship against Braun Breaker, which I think Breaker is going to retain. But there's there's a chance they finally put a belt on uh, Jay Uso because it has been a while when I kind of thought that they were going to promote Jay Uso. They were like, oh, no, you know, now we're going to go down this. Or guess what? He's not going to win the money in the bank. And I feel like, you know, they had opportunity after opportunity to do it. So, you know, that could be the same for Jay Uso. For Cody Rhodes kind of being on the team as well, I feel like right now maybe this is kind of their way of getting it out of the way. Like maybe uh, Roman Reigns is going to try to recruit some people like Hikaleo, like Zila Fatu, try to, you know, beg Jimmy. And maybe I, I, it's, uh, finding that fourth person is going to be hard. It's going to be very hard. I'm confused. I thought they were turning Roman Reigns babyface. Why is he acting like that toward the fans? And I don't think he's going to turn on Cody at Bad Blood. That's a Vince McMahon logic for booking. I oh my god, yes. That, that's a total, that's a total Vince McMahon booking right there. You know, the creative writing team back, like like what I was kind of thinking of back once when it was after WrestleMania 39 where he lost, where Cody Rhodes actually found out in the middle of the match to to lose. To lose. And the next Monday night raw, he fought um he was going to attack him with Brock Lesnar. Then Brock Lesnar turns on him. And I was like, you know, I, I get like keeping these two superstars busy. But like, I don't know, the storyline kind of has to make sense. And, um, you know, Roman Reigns, I think he's going to be like that rugged baby face. You know, he's not going to be that, you know, the pander to the crowd. Obviously, the, you know, the crowd loves him. They love him, you know, kind of like, you know, choose the lesser evil. You don't want to be, you don't want to acknowledge Solo Sokoa as the true tribal chief. But, uh, you know, I, I, I personally, I thought it was kind of, you know, I thought it was, I thought it was good. I thought it was great. I thought it was something that they should have done for Roman a long time ago. But um, now he's striving for the WWE Championship. Again, he wants to be the tribal chief. He wants to figure out family business first. He even said, he was like, you know what? I honestly don't need this guy, Cody Rhodes, on my side. I can go ahead and do it all by myself. Uh, question, uh, would you say he's going to be like a Stone Cold Steve Austin type of... Yeah, Stone Cold Steve Austin was like that. Like, you know what I mean? He, he didn't really care. Like, he... Of course, there were some interactions with the fans, but he was more like, you know what? I'm going to go out there and do my thing. I'm going to be a badass. I'm going to defy, you know, orders. I'm going to go out there and just be defiant. And people are going to love me. People are going to love me for it. I'm not going to have to, like, kiss ass or, you know, kiss babies' heads and, like, shake hands and stuff like that. I feel like the storyline automatically kind of makes you feel like, you know, he's kind of heading, like he is heading toward a baby face. So, um, you know, kind of the comparison with Stoke Cold Steve Austin is kind of, you know, hitting the nail on the head. So I thought overall it's kind of crazy. Both of them did sign the contract. So the match is on for WWE Bad Blood. It should be interesting. It should be awesome. I can't wait to see it. And I thought it was kind of crazy how Cody Rhodes basically said, yeah, it hasn't been your WrestleMania. Has it been your WWE since WrestleMania? And it was like, you know, crickets. Everybody was like, oh, my God, I can't believe he just said that. But he did. 
So, all right, moving on. We have some WWE Monday Night Raw preview to go on. It's happening right now. I can't wait to watch it. I have it on record. Have not checked a single shred of social media, TikTok, Instagram, or Facebook for any um, for any updates. So, um, yeah, stay tuned. We're going to dig on into it when we come back. So, hey, stay tuned. <laughs> 